Do you need health care? There's a path that even us non-union folks can take. Erica J is helping us with how to convert the work. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kim Wilson. And I'm Natasha Marjevka. And this is Speechless. Welcome to our behind the scenes take on Real Life in VO, where we share our stories and our resources and our unsolicited opinions. I see you waving your head over there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Today, we have an amazing talent named Erica J. Have you heard of her? You might have if you went to VO Atlanta. <laughs> Go ahead. Erica J has an incredible story of how she came from music to then become this super successful talent. She did things that none of us would recommend in terms of how you start your career, but she just happens to be that talented and is an incredible success, wins awards and all the things. But what she's going to tell us about today is how the non-union talent out there, like, can, us. like us, can go to the SAG and after union and qualify for health care. We're what? really interested in this, and we're also interested in becoming SAG eligible. So there is some backstory to that. But take a listen to this. Welcome to the show, Erica J. We are absolutely thrilled to have you and your studio bricks here with us today. <laughs> <laughs> My beautiful, beautiful, trusted studio bricks. It's, oh, I love uh, you I so know. much. Hi, honey. First hi, question, honey, what did you bring to drink with us, to cheers I, with? I brought... Watered down orange juice. Okay. <laughs> Why is it watered down? Explain. So, okay, because I did this program like a couple years ago. God, I can't remember the name of the program, but they talk about this drink that you make called H2 Orange. And they just talk mm-hmm. about how to get you to drink more water throughout the day, you can actually do like a seven to one ratio of orange oh, juice right. and it still oh, has its taste. Right. Ah. And you get so much more water, you get a little bit of the flavor. Great and idea. encourage you to drink more water throughout seven the day. That makes, me want, that makes me want water. Yeah. So for okay. every seven, seven ounces of water, one ounce of orange juice, I throw a little bit of stevia in there so it's still kind of sweet. And I like it. Sounds really it. good. <laughs> Kim, and the citrus helps with the one. clicks a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So stevia I, does? Um, it's, you no, know, the, the orange juice, actually. Oh, the orange juice I've, does. I've, yeah, I've heard what that. What in the world is It's a, called, I know, it's called a cucumber blue. And it's muddled cucumber, mint, and basil Mm. with Empress Gin and some soda water. It looks gray. It looks like a really interesting blue gray. Yeah, so pretty. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna share something that I you're gonna be surprised about, Kim. Okay. I have the spiced coke and it has with raspberry raspberry spiced coke is my new favorite that my mouth is watering right now. I have to open it. It's wanting to try that. It's good. It's so good. It's kind of like brio. I like cherry coke. Yeah, but like do you like coke brio? Too. Italian, the Italian soda that's spiced. Hmm. Mm. Mm. Oh, yum! Oh, Stuff really? I'm gonna burp. Have you ever had brio? You must have. You're Italian. I haven't. Have you? I have not. I oh, have not. it's a spicy cola. Anyway, delicious raspberry okay. spiced coke. I and I'm not a. I'm usually a diet soda, like if I drink soda at all, it's a diet soda. This is not diet. I'm, I like the mini ones too, but anyway. Like, do you mean like yeah. Dr. Pepper spice? Do you know how Dr. Pepper is kind of that spice? Can't stand no? cherry flavored drinks. Oh. Mm-mm. Cherry no. Coke is, is Cherry spice. Coke is amazing with yeah, ice cream. I know. Hello? I, I'm just not on the Cherry Coke team. I'm on the poor this, thing. This is so good. Okay. <laughs> you right. found now a berry. We, now we all got to try it. <laughs> mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Okay, Erica J. Yay. I'm going to try to be polite and not belch through the interview <laughs> to be really. I would argue that it is polite because then you're not <laughs> holding back. You're being authentic. I agree. <laughs> I, love you it. Know, I love it. I love I it. I saw Erica J at VO Atlanta and mm-hmm. um, I was fascinated, though. I had my hand up the whole time like, can I ask a question? Can I ask a question? She kept saying, <laughs> it's on the next slide. The answer's on the next slide. The answer's on the next slide. Oh. <laughs> I first saw Erica J on my birthday at what? One Voice when she was pregnant with her babe Aww. and she was going up and down to the stage constantly because she was winning like crazy. <laughs> I'm like, 
my gosh, this woman. And I mean, you were pregnant. I was pregnant. With a capital P. <laughs> and were, yes. And you were hustling up to the stage. <laughs> You're a superstar in my eyes for so many reasons. Why, oh, thank you. Where are you, you located, Erica? Um, I'm originally from D.C., but I live in Atlanta now. I've been here for about seven okay. years. Oh, yeah. cool. Okay, cool. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about your VO journey, please. Yeah, and where Ooh. you are now. Let's see. Goodness gracious. I'm fighting for the next job every day like everybody else. But um, yeah, so where I started, I uh, started more of my like, creative business endeavors in music was where I started. So cool. I was you know, singing and writing my own music and recording my own music. So that's how I kind of had the home studio already set and learned mm. how to record myself arranging my own stuff all of that doing stage shows and oh. i was also in a corporate wow. band so i was mm. um while my music was still you know trying to get out there i was still making money doing music by doing that um mm. high end weddings and corporate parties and ha 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 you know and yeah. um there was good times being on stage i loved it um yeah. so yeah, thank you. Um, one day, um, some of my music and creative friends said something about a voiceover, and I was like, "Well, what's that? What's voiceover? You know, that sounds interesting." So I was in Richmond, Virginia at the time, and uh, I started you know, doing the Google hustle, kind of looking around, like, "What is voiceover? And what studios do that?" And um, I was supposed to be in a musical with a uh, theater major from VCU. She was directing us, and she told me about one studio in Richmond that did voiceover demos. So I went over there bless their hearts they still hire me to this day oh. i went straight to a demo don't do what i did everyone but i did i did and they guided me through it and they were like you know here's the copy and i'm like well what's copy like <laughs> i mean you did, the, you did the number one rule that you should never do i did i did i went straight to a demo so don't do what i did however Remember that I was a communication major, I right. was in music, performer. and I already knew how to self-record. I was a performer, so I had some things behind acting. me. You had acting chops. Yeah. By accident, but yeah, I wasn't formally <laughs> actor trained, so it just worked out, but I did struggle, and I would hope that demo never sees the light of day, because <laughs> yeah, it wasn't great. Um, but got through that, did the P2P thing for years, was kind of on my own, and then I found VO Atlanta by looking online, and I watched the online version in I think it was 2018 mm -hmm. um, or maybe it was 2019 and I was like okay well maybe this is cool and I did a summer well, intensive was it 2020 it was 2020 no no, no it, was it wasn't before <laughs> so what they a... did was they had the in-person conference but they offered you to be able to buy oh. the stream oh. and have to watch it after the fact for like a hundred bucks oh. before oh. Pan yeah before the pandemic okay um and I watched it and I was like, oh, like I saw Jordan on there and somebody else talking. And I was just, I didn't know any of these people at this time. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, okay. Cause I, I was like, is this conference worth it? It was like 500 bucks. I'll pay a hundred and watch, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but that was how I started to kind of learn about everybody. And then I went to the summer intensive in 2019 and met Cliff Selman and mm -hmm. K-Bess and did classes yes. with them. Joe Cipriano was the other choice. And it was like, I want to take all three, but mm -hmm. got to meet them. And it was just like Cliff was so supportive and like, he's like, you know, you got something and you're great and you need to be doing this. And I was literally at the point where I was about to quit voiceover um, mm -hmm. when that happened. And it was because, yeah, it just wasn't working. So then pandemic happens and it's like, Hooray! oh boy, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the corporate job now goes from two days at home a week to every day you're home. And I was able to dig in and mm -hmm. listening to uh jamie muffet's podcast the o school i like binged 50 episodes in a couple months and reached mm -hmm. out to everybody that he had as a guest like hey i'm erica jay nice to meet you i love that you had to say on the podcast and i started meeting everybody through facebook and linkedin <laughs> yeah smart really so smart. Yeah, so smart. that was and then we grew and grew i got representation i did classes and workshops like it was going out of style and it worked somehow, and yes, now I'm doing okay. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I say, love this. Oh my gosh! Wow. Oh my well, gosh. we know that you have a ton of wisdom about a lot of things, I'm sure. But your presentation at VO Atlanta this year was about converting your work so that you could get health care. Um, it's just and, so important. We, yeah. some, some of us need health care. And this have no idea all need any of this information. It's a basic yeah. human right. I we mean, a basic know. human right. I mean, we could yeah. go down that path, which I would love to, but... Right now we're going no, to not today. <laughs> look at Look at Natasha's face. Please don't, please don't, please don't. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. The voiceover uh, yeah. podcast. Yeah. Okay. Do so, you want to use any slides or no? 
Are we um, going to- nah, let's just have a chat. I have the okay, slides cool. from. Um, and you know, yeah. if you don't want to give away your secret sauce and you want to teach this someplace else, you don't have to give it all. You don't have to give no, it all away. Not okay. at all. Um, it's just that, like, I just kind of like having them. My slides really aren't that pretty. It was just kind of like just so I wouldn't forget certain points. Um, yep. Yeah. Yeah. It was just. The the thing I started out with, well, first of all, was my disclaimer that, you know, I'm just here to not advocate for one union status or another. Mm-hmm. I don't represent anybody except for Erica J. I'm not a signatory or organization. You know, I'm just telling you my personal experience, and I hope that it'll help somebody else learn that it's easier to get health care than you think. That's mm-hmm. my disclaimer. Awesome. Um, But what the why was for me, personally... Um, it's not a secret. I've always put out there that, you know, I still work in corporate as well, um, even to this day. Um, as I've looked for my long range plan, you know, that's not going to be sustainable forever. So the main reason a lot of people stay in their day jobs isn't necessarily money, it's healthcare. Yeah. Yeah. So I needed to make sure that I had a pathway to be able to qualify for that. Um, I said at VOA that, you know, I have Graves' disease. It is hyperthyroidism. I have medications I have to take. I have to go to the doctor every three months. Uh, my husband is has sickle cell, genetic mm. disease. He was born with that. We have to have health care. I have a baby, 17-month-old. My oldest is trans. My middle child is on the spectrum. We all need health care. I cannot walk away yes. from a job and not be able to take my people to the doctor. So, yes. Um, you know, we get a paper cut. I'm like, let's go to the doctor. I'm, I'm that person. So <laughs> nice to meet you. So am I. <laughs> Welcome. We, we meet on Thursdays at seven. Yeah. So <laughs> did um, you call the doctor? I know. I know. So I'm like, we have to have health care. So that was my personal reason for I had to find a way. And I just kept digging until I figured it out. Then right before VO Atlanta started or, or during, uh, I saw that the newest results came out from the survey that Nava does. Mm hmm. And on that graph, I think it said like 54% of people responded to the question about converting work if they found the process confusing. Um, they were, they said that the process felt confusing and um, oh, what was the term that they used? I've got it here somewhere. That it was challenging and confusing. Mm-hmm. 54% of respondents, like 1,800 people responded. And I'm like, mm-hmm. oh my God, it's like almost 1,000 people that think that this is challenging. I had people come up to me right before and say, hey, you know, hey, I'm FICOR. Can, can I get healthcare? I'm like, mm. yes, you know, people that are well accomplished and they were like, you know, I'm like $3,000 away and my deadline is in three weeks. Are you going to be able to tell me how to get it? Yes. <laughs> you know, so that was my big why is that I hate so awesome. hearing, you know, my fellow actors that, that, that this just don't understand this just because it seems challenging and, and it is, it is confusing. Um, so I just wanted to be able to share what I learned. That please, was kind of my why. please. So, yeah. well, I mean, and I love how spirited you are about it and positive. I feel I encouraged know. already. The passion, <laughs> right? I need to put this into an audition somewhere because, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, right, right, right. This is one of your like go-to moments. Write it down. I know, oh. right? Right. My coach a, is going to see it and be we like, "Need a spirited, passionate read." She's it's like, like oh, "I don't care." I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, I mean, unless you have like a particular question, I can kind of like give you like the mini presentation yeah, I guess. do it Give us the, mm-hmm. okay yeah and feel free to interject with questions yeah um so Are the first thing though? yeah yeah like the first thing I talked about was union status because like I said that's most people's first question is like you know do I have to be actually full union member to in order to get health care and the answer is no um mm-hmm. first understanding kind of what all the options are um, everybody starts as non-union, right? I mean, unless somehow you can be union when you're born. I don't know how that works, but <laughs> we would all start as non-union, right? right. <laughs> Until you actually join. Um, so if you join the union full, then yes, you're only doing union work. Um, so there's non-union and union as those two options. You can be SAG eligible, which means, you know, you've done maybe a job, but you haven't had to join yet. Um, some people that live in right to work states like Georgia or Virginia, I know there are a million others, but those are the two I know of because I live there. Um, you may not ever have to join versus if you live in like California or New York, you have that OK 30 where, you know, you do um, a job and you have 30 days where you have to join after that. Mm-hmm. You have other types of work that are non-jurisdictional, so they're not really you. It's not it has to be union work. It's not really non-union. It's sort of in no man's land. And that is um, work that you're easily able to convert. Um, 
the main one that I talked about is the uh, non-broadcast, your corporate co-ed agreement is what it's called for SAG. That's mm -hmm. the work that's the easiest to convert mm -hmm. um, because it is uh, the LMAC contract. Um, it, there's like two different categories and I'll get into that. Um, mm -hmm. Cat one and cat two. And you don't have to get any sort of like pre-approvals like you do with commercial work. Um, I know Tim Friedlander um, talked about how there has to have like a, a production ID and all these things that you have to get like, it mm. takes like three weeks to get. And nobody's waiting three weeks for a voiceover job, right? Like, <laughs> no, and I'm sure the corporations or the company that hired you aren't psyched about it. So, well, yeah. So, I mean, that's the other question that I had is, you know, like, do you have to tell them? And the answer is no. <laughs> um, and it's not, I want to be clear that I'm not saying, you know, it'd be deceptive or anything like that. But it doesn't really make any difference to your client. Um, right. And in some cases, it just makes it more confusing. What they get is they get an invoice and it does break down everything, um, you know, talking about the payroll amount, the um, workman's comp, all that sort of stuff you would typically see. Um, but they just get an invoice to pay. And that is the only thing they have to do. They don't have mm -hmm. to join the union. They don't have to say, you know, they're a sign signatory. Um nothing like that. They're not affiliated with the UN union by doing this. It's just for that one partic particular job. Um, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but like, like you said, I'm spirited and just passionate. <laughs> and, and I ask those questions. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. slap me down. No, you're good. You're good. This is great. I'll say it's on the next one. Um, another big question that I got was like, you know, how do I know, how do I qualify in terms of like, how much work do I have to do? Um, right now, the minimum earnings requirement for 2024 I know it went up a little bit. It's actually 27,000 even. Um, mm -hmm. I know there's like a number of days. I don't really get into that part because I think that's more for the on-camera world. Somebody could correct me, but I look at the dollar amount. Um, so you have to have $27,000 of union work within a certain time frame, And they'll tell you like what that time frame is. I think it's dependent on whether when when you join or when you did your first union job but there's it's a t rolling 12 months like mine for instance um ends on june 30th so i have from july 1st through june 30th of every year to hit my twenty seven thousand dollars to qualify and all those 20 that each dollar of the twenty seven thousand mm -hmm. dollars has to be sag yes has to be union has to be union yes and the reason i make that distinction and i know i'm jumping around so please no, stop you're me good. If, um, confusing um because even though sag aftra is one union right it's still conjoined of sag and aftra sure mm -hmm. so some jobs are under sag and some jobs are coming under aftra co-ed jobs corporate narration comes in under the aftra contracts the aftra side oh so the reason that that matters, <laughs> this was one of the things that saved me, was okay. because I learned through working with Soundbox, Tim Friedlander and Bethany and Tony, they are great. They really helped me understand all this, um, is that when you're trying to meet that threshold in that certain time frame, the, uh, the jobs that come in under SAG, the date that it posts to your account that accounts for is based on the date of the check. When it comes in under AFTRA, it's based on the date of the job. Okay. Okay. So the reason that matters is like, you know, let's say my deadline is, mm -hmm. you don't want to cut it this close, but let's say my deadline's in a week. And I'm like, okay, I need to convert this job because I know I have another, one time I was $50 short. <laughs> I, I kid you not. <laughs> it's like a stomach ache. Yeah. <laughs> like I knew I wasn't going to need it that year, but I was like, this can never happen again. So mm -hmm. let's say you were $50 short, you know, on meeting your threshold. If you do a job before that end of that time frame comes, if I did that job before June 30th, it could be June 23rd, it'll count. Versus if it's a SAG job, I have to wait and wait for them to cut the check. And that's the date that counts. Okay. So okay. that's another reason why I say like co-ed jobs are great to convert because you know what the date is going to be. I feel like like we're way in the deep end already, Erica. <laughs> I know. I okay. Know. We're going to we're going to break this down a little bit. We're going to take a quick break. Yeah. And Erica's going to like simplify and then deep dive again. We'll be right back. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. All right. Popping in with our speeches promo in between the show. Hope you're loving it. We were loving that interview. Thank you to our sponsors, Studio Bricks. We love you, Studio Bricks. And Vocal Booth to Go. We love you too. Thank you so much for being our sponsor. We appreciate you so much. Absolutely. Hey, listen. 
We've got something coming up in August. August 3rd, specifically one day only. It's a pop-up casting workshop. You want to get to know casting directors? If you watch the show, you'll know why. We have three educational opportunities on August 3rd. Sign up on our website, www, uh, speechlessvo.com, and you will find all the details there for sign up to attend. Yeah, the casting directors, Mary Lynn Wisner, the two casting directors at The Voice Caster, and Hello. Christine Paiva. So excited to have them. But then you're also getting meals. You're getting a full lunch. You're getting a cocktail party. You're getting all the drinks, <laughs> uh, including coffee, coffee service, but and wine, you get a beer, recording. all the things. Yeah. You get the recording so. of the event as well. Okay. So was that enough? I think maybe that was enough to share, but we also want to share one more thing, and that is our Speechless Secret Society. So the really great thing about that group is that once a month we get together and um, we talk about wins and challenges and and give advice to each other. And then we also do some educational things that raises the bar for everyone. It's so a check safe out, place. Safe check place. out speechlessvo.com and we'll see you on the other side. Okay, we are back with Erica J, and she is going to, well, dumb it down a little bit so we can understand the step-by-step -step process because Kim and I are both very interested in making this work, figuring out how to get health care. We're currently both non-union, but we are ready to make the change. So Erica, please enlighten us. Lay it on us. <laughs> Absolutely. And just to clarify one thing, I know I had said that co-ed was the easiest to convert, and I kind of quantified that with corporate narration. Co-ed actually stands for, I think it's corporate educational. So your things like your corporate narration, your non-broadcast, your e-learning, those Perfect. are the things that will fall under, the, yes, that will fall yes. under that contract. So, you know, you could easily get an e-learning job that's, you know, 10,000 words. Maybe you get three or $4,000 for it. You could convert that. Mm -hmm. awesome. But it's costly. So wait a minute, you'll, wait a you'll minute. tell She's us. Getting okay. She's, She's getting, getting there. there. She's yeah, getting yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you do this? Right. Like yes, now you know please. how much you have to have. You know that there's a 12 month period that you have to meet that $27,000 threshold within. How do I yep. convert? Um, so you want to go to a signatory. And basically those are the people that know all the union stuff that are smarter than me in that area, you right. know, that are going to be able to make this job now union. So it counts. Okay. Um, I personally have only used Soundbox, which mm -hmm. is Tim Friedlander's um, signatory company. Mm -hmm. um, go to the, on their website. They have a form, very simple, mm -hmm. and asks you a few questions about the job, like, um, you know, what the rate is, um, how many sessions, um, of course, the date, if you're ready to convert, or if you're just sort of doing an inquiry, which you can do before you actually even do the job. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. So you can kind of get a sense of if this job is convertible first. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Um, and then, excuse me, the one, another question that they'll ask you, and this is important, is if there are any um, on camera talent. And you may not know that at the time. Um, oh. So typically, I'll end up putting I don't know, because mm -hmm. it's, you know, new. But if you know for a fact that there are other people in that job that are non union, that is something that you can't convert. And okay. the reason for that is you can't have one job that is union for one person, but non-union for everybody else. Okay, that, that makes, makes sense. sense. Right. That makes sense. Right. right. Usually mm -hmm. e-learning, well, usually my stuff is not. Usually it's not. Like it's slides or it's animation. You're yeah. the, really the only actor on it. So that's why I say that's yeah. really easy to convert. Yeah. But that's yeah. something that you want to just be aware of. Okay. Um, yeah. So you go to that signatory website, um, mm -hmm. fill out that form. Uh, mm -hmm. Bethany is really great about getting back to you. I mean, really fast, like Aww. usually like next day. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's um, great. It's really great. And then she just kind of lets you know, all right, you know, for this amount, um, this is going to be the amount that you, um, you know, she'll break it down for you. How much of it is going to be payroll. In fact, let me skip to that real quick so I can speak to do, do, do my notes. There we go. Yeah. So, so you know, they break down if, oh, go mm -hmm. ahead. I don't well, I was just going to say that you're going to break down all the different fees within Yes. The uh, the amount that you have to contribute. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. So when you're figuring out if this is something that you can convert or not, um, you have to first, again, make sure that that individual job is going to be enough to be convertible. And the amount that you have to get in your account, in your pocket, has to meet scale. Oh, so, okay. okay. Right. Yeah. 
so right now for um cat one um i believe here let me go back that's category category one yes of the co-ed contract which the way i broke it down is i think cat one is more in-house internal like it's not going to be um public facing at all and it has usually about a 10 year usage period you know so, okay yeah i um, all I, I just caught myself almost falling off to sleep sorry erica what <laughs> like, literally i know that... it's the it's wow. it's the contract oh stuff. i know no, I it's no these I'm, words. I'm in here i'm in here i'm going i'm i'm, I'm here glad. with you i'm glad like, i got Keep you going. Keep Cat going. one. Okay. Oh, man. So I then have another category two. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna pep this up a little bit. I gotta get more energy. No, I'm in, I'm so. with you. Keep going. <laughs> so for cat two, these are gonna be your things that are public. And you know, maybe it's like just going on YouTube or it's going on their website. And yeah. um that is generally three years usage. Um yeah. so you'll want to know if it's gonna be like cat one, cat two, because they're gonna ask you that on on the form so they know which contract to put it under. The okay. minimum amount that you have to get in your account after all the fees for cat mm -hmm. one is 505 per hour mm -hmm. for cat two, it's 563 per hour. So slightly higher if it's going to be public facing. Now, sometimes our clients go, well, it's per word. Mm. Well, so what do we do? Do we just guess? So, yes. So what you will want to take into account is per um, how much studio time you spent, because I personally quote my e-learning by word as well. Mm -hmm. So I'll estimate, I'll know, you know, if that's a 10,000 word job, it might take me X amount of hours to do it. Um, even if it took me four hours, if I'm getting three or 4,000 for that, that means that if I get, you know, maybe 2,000 in my account and I'll kind of reverse engineer the fees. Right. Um, and that's what Bethany can help you with too, and making sure that you have enough to convert this job. But yes, Ooh, you are going to you are going to have to kind of know, yeah, and gauge and yeah. estimate how many hours well, it'll take you. The good, N Natasha, the good thing I'm hearing here is Bethany can help you over sure. at Sandbox. Right. Absolutely. But she can help any of us yes. figure it she out. And if all. we don't get it right on the first one, the mm -hmm. next, the following mm -hmm. job will be that much more educated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. And okay. the great thing is if you get one of those like really short jobs, like let's say how many 90 second explainers have we done right like right yeah uh, any of those you might yeah. be in that session for 20 minutes you might be yeah. in that session for five minutes right yeah right if it's half an hour the rate is lower and this okay. was what helped me qualify last year okay um for cat one it's only 302 that you have to get in your account if it's a 30 minute job not a full hour and for cat two it's 333 is this all wow. written down somewhere, Erica? It is. It is. It is. <laughs> okay. So, so you're going to send us this, the link, right? Sure. Yeah. yeah sure I can everybody. send it. I was going to say all of this is on the Soundbox website. Um, and okay, honestly, good. I stole screenshots from his site and I told Tim, I was like, hey, you know, I stole stuff from your site. I credited him on my slide. But um, perfect. Yeah. All we will do the same. Down. We will <laughs> do the same for yeah. our viewers. Yeah. There yeah. you go. Um, yeah. So, that way, you know that if you have one of those short jobs and it doesn't take you a full hour, yeah, you can have that lower rate, and that's a job that you can now convert. That's perfect because some yeah. of us don't work for under two fifty or three fifty. Exactly. So this is a this great is case fantastic. to up your rates. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. So now that's just the base. Again, that's the amount that's like scale for SAG has to make sure for for the union that you have to make sure that you get in your account. That's your pay. Mm -hmm. You have to make sure that the rate is enough to cover agent fee if you're using an agent. I know for a lot of co-ed jobs, we're not. So you don't have to worry about that but for usually. It's 18.75% that's going to be going towards your health and retirement. Mm -hmm. So looking at the breakdown right now for Cat 1, just to illustrate this example from this uh, SB signatory uh, site. If 503 is your base for scale, health and retirement would be roughly about 103 then you have your workers' compensation for your state. I know Tim has said that California is one of the lowest in the country. That's the example they have on their site. It's only 1.96%. I think for Georgia, it might be two point something. There are some well, states I think go as high as like six. Yeah. Massachusetts um, might be on the higher scale. Huh? Yeah, yeah. So you have to know, and that's what Bethany will help you to tell you what that is too for your state. Um, right. So that could be a little higher or lower depending on where you live. Um, but in this example, it's $10, 1084 then your employer contributions, your platform payroll fee, because uh, the payroll platform that they're using, I mean, there's a fee for it. So it's 1.49% sure. that you have to have built into there. And then the signatory fee. Now, for me, the signatory fee is $75 
or 10%, so $75 minimum or 10% of, of the cost of the job. Okay. A lot of times if the, uh, if the, um, client is not paying that, then you pay that after. So mm -hmm. I kind of just make it a business expense. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's a service yeah. that I'm paying for. So mm -hmm. I don't even kind of count that into like, that's the minimum that I have to hit. Um, but in this example on his website, he's saying that the total you need from the client is 832.74. And if okay. you are commanding a rate of 850 for this job, you can convert that. You're going to get 503 in your account, or maybe a little more than that. Um, you know, because I've rounded it off at 850. Sure, but, sure. Um, that would cover all these other fees. And when you convert that job, that would count towards your- That makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That mm -hmm. makes sense. How are you feeling, Natasha? I know it's a lot. It's a lot. I forgot it? to share with y'all that I am Canadian. So this whole That's thing nice. of I can't afford health care is yeah. confusing. Oh. So, okay, so now confusing I'm paying all this. Confusing and maddening. Yeah. So I'm paying all this now. I can qualify. I'm at twenty seven thousand. I've managed over, you know, as a portion of my income. So now you get to, you know, you get qualify for certain kind of health care. Is this how? I mean, I don't mean to make it about that right now, but how does so SAG has options, health care options, and I I also want to add that Nava has health care options for non union talent. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And yep. there may be other ways for you to get health care. So that's a good point. This my talk was mainly about being able to qualify for the SAG plan because it is, yes. this is such a wonderful plan. Good I mean, to even, know. OK. Even compared to like my corporate, it was like great it, it, to know. I, I think it was seven seventy five a quarter to cover my family. That's wow. huge. Premium. Yeah. Hugely like, great. Wow. Yeah. Um, you know, like they cover like 90 percent of uh the labs versus a, a lot of places cover 80 at best um so it's a great at plan best. however okay. there are other places to look like you said nava sure. has options um that you can look into i actually went to my regional um chamber of commerce and i went to a meeting that they had and they said that they offer a health plan if you have at least two employees interesting so, so do you, you know, have two employees now no i don't right now but i could <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm structured yeah. as an S corp, so if I put my husband on payroll, I'd have two employees. Excellent. So if we needed healthcare, I have an option. Um, so there may be other places to look. So don't feel like if you're not here yet that you you know there's nowhere to look for healthcare. Um, yeah. I know there are plenty of people that are self employed that get healthcare elsewhere. It's yeah. just that when you have access to a plan that's this wonderful and affordable, if you great will, to you know, excellent, right. super. Yeah. Super. So what else do we need to know, Erica J? What else have you got for us that's so, oh, you know, there's yeah. just, or have um, we, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I actually titled my, uh, my presentation, um, hacking your way to healthcare. So okay. I like kind of talking about like the hacks, like that's sort of all the foundational information, right? So okay. mm -hmm. the hacks that I had, number one was to look for industrial work to convert because it is the yeah. easiest type of VO to move yes. from non-union to union. Like yes. it's so much easier than anything else. Tim mm -hmm. says that commercial is almost impossible to convert. It's mm. really expensive and only like maybe a couple signatories can do it. Um, mm. But it doesn't need any pre-approval like other types do. Um, I found out that you can convert like radio commercials and podcasts and all sorts of other stuff. But mm. industrial work is the easiest one and most straightforward. Okay. Okay. Um, it's the only type of work you can convert after the session has happened. So if you're like, hey, you know, they need this today and I get the rate, make sure everything works. And we've already done the, the session. And now I can still go and see if I can convert that job as opposed okay. to having to get Fantastic. all the approvals before. Okay. Um, it's easier to find this type of work if you don't have representation yet. You mm -hmm. can get this work from SEO. You can get this work from word of mouth, from your chamber of commerce, from P2Ps. You know, there's all types of places you can get corporate work. So it's it makes it a little more accessible mm -hmm. um, if you're relatively new or starting out. And um, it's so much more often, like we said, that you're the only actor on the job. So you don't have to worry about if anybody else on camera or voicing is non-union. So yeah. if you're the only one, then you can easily convert it. Okay. Yep. So much less baggage. Okay. <gasps> yes. I love, love it. it. Less baggage. Um, Ready for hack number two? Yes. yes. Hack number two. Bring it. <laughs> so like we said, um, the deadline, if it's getting close because you have that timeline that 12 month period depending on where you where you land um, that you have to reach that twenty seven thousand dollar minimum if you haven't yet met your threshold you can start converting that industrial work before your deadline but you really kind of have up until the deadline because that's coming in under aftra that under that co-ed uh corporate educational work um the date that it posts 
to consider for your qualification for health care is based on the date of the job yes. versus it being the date of the check. Uh-huh. So knowing that like if you're coming really close to that deadline and you want to get a few in, then mm-hmm. you'll be able to get those to post and count for that year. Fantastic. Nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So hack number three, um, talked about this again, but I just really think it deserves mentioning more than once is that if the job is only like 30 minutes or less of booth time, mm-hmm. instead of having to hit that scale number of $500, mm-hmm. you can lower the, you, know, you can do lower cost jobs or uh, lower paying jobs and still have them help you qualify if it's 30 minutes less because it's only 332 that has to hit your account. Um, so instead of the minimum being like, what did it say on Tim's site? I think, think like 832. Yeah, like you it said eight, be, some eight something. Yeah, it might end up being like, Five 150 something. less than exactly yeah yeah again bethany can help you do the math but you know maybe if you get something closer to like 600 you could probably convert that so it's a 30 minute and a 60 minute in terms of the work that you put in and you're doing a self-directed thing you could easily get many under 30 minutes exactly. yeah okay exactly okay one Love caveat this. to that is that it does cost you the 75 dollar minimum every time no you matter what the job. okay yeah so if you can, this is almost like a bonus hack. So if you have like, let's say it's the same client and they have like four scripts, right? Mm-hmm. Instead, you don't have, have to do that as four separate jobs. You could bundle that, right? So you're still okay. paying 10%, you know, as it goes above the 75 threshold. Oh, okay. But now you can bundle that. And if it took you an hour to do the four scripts, maybe it was 500 a script and you've got $2,000 now that you can, you know, get okay. credited towards yeah. your health Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yep. Phew. Ugh, all right. I know it's a lot. I'm trying to no, blaze it's through good. it. It's good. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so I've got hack number four, and this one doesn't apply to everybody. But again, if you're trying to, every dollar counts and you're trying to get the, the uh, client job to be at a rate where you can convert it. If you are set up as a loan out company, the rate is actually a little bit lower. And the reason for that is because now you're not having to pay that um, that unemployment insurance piece because your company is already taking care of that because okay. you are an employee. What is a loan out? Yes. So if you are just kind of doing business as yourself, talking about business structures, yep. um, you might be a sole proprietor or you might have gotten your LLC and you are a single member LLC. Okay. If you are, and this is actually whether you're an S corp or not, I believe, um, when you get an LLC, you are being loaned out by your company to do work. Ah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So the client is actually hiring your company and Mm -hmm. you are like an employee of your own company doing that. And if you're Mm -hmm. a loan out, then there are certain um, elements of this, uh, this breakdown that you don't have to pay anymore. Yeah. As long as you have that paperwork to show that you're a loan out company. Yeah. 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 Perfect. So that's a great one to lower it just a tad. Um, And one thing that I didn't mention is that when you're trying to figure out, okay, this job said, that they're going to pay me 800 bucks. If I know I have to get at least 505, you know, how do I know what all these different numbers break down to from my scenario before Mm -hmm. you even contact Bethany or whoever. Mm -hmm. Tim says it's about 48% that you need to have on top of the, of the scale rate in order for you to meet that minimum. So that's a good sort of, you know, number to play around with in your head. 48%. That feels like a lot, but okay. I know, I know, I know. But if you think, again, this is a great case for increasing your rates. So if it's, you know, a $500 minimum that you have to hit in order to, for it to be scale, 750 ish, you know, adding about maybe 50% on top, give or take five or 10%. It's just quick math to be able to get you close. Um, And yeah, you can try to say, hey, you know, give extra value. I actually think that was my other hack. Let me not get ahead of myself. Yes, I did. (laughs) So hack number five is get to the minimum amount needed to convert the job. You can do that. If the rate comes in a little low, add value in order to justify a higher rate, right? Uh Like you can include revisions. Mm -hmm. You can offer a live session because especially your corporate clients, that live session thing isn't always something that they know that's offered true. It's, that's it kind true. of wows them oh yeah. i can i can listen in while you do a voiceover i've yeah. never done that before i can give you direction like live i can tell you how to do it or mm-hmm. you know i'm like yeah you can give me a lot of different you know directions we can try different ways and that's an added value to them mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um and including that and saying yes this is my rate but it includes all these things yeah they're more likely to pay it yeah i um, love it i love yeah. it 
you could um, maybe they say that we only need it internal and you can say, well, I know this rate is this. I can offer you to be able to put it on your YouTube page for two years, you know, and go ahead and offer them so, some organic web usage where it's not going to make you conflict. But now, again, it's more value to um, kind of make that rate worth it for them. Yeah. 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 Wow. Magical, yeah. Erica. Oh, Love it. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. So, oh my gosh, so, Erica. So very much. I know. I know. Wow. I hope I simplified it. I know you it did. totally did. Mm -hmm. It's still confusing. Totally it's still a lot to digest. Um, you know, anybody's questions, feel free to reach out for what I know. And but for most things, honestly, reach out to a signatory. I swear I don't work for Tim, but they have just been so <laughs> great. They've helped me qualify for a couple of years now. It's so easy to convert. They're great people. Oh, they work fast. Well, we'll put them as a resource for sure, because uh, that would be great. Yeah. Wow. And thank wow. you so much for sharing all this. I think. Yeah. Um, Cheers. I have a yes, lot. I have a lot to think about. And cheers! This episode of Speechless is brought to you by Voice Talent Need Quiet. For us, quiet comes in the form of a Studio Bricks booth. I love my Studio Bricks because it's whisper quiet in my incredibly noisy neighborhood. And I love my booth because when clients see me on Zoom, they know I'm a pro. <laughs> Go to StudioBricks.com. World-class sound isolation, light environmental footprint. Kim, have you ever made a pillow tent in your hotel room when a client asks for an audition or a job when you're away? Yes. Yes, and I know what you're going to say. Vomo, the VO mobile booth, right? Right, exactly. It's a portable vocal booth and ready for recording wherever and whenever. I feel like I really need that because I get nervous about pillow forts. So, mm, yeah. so why do we need it then? Because it folds up very nice and neat, and you can take it with you wherever you go. Absolutely. And you can check it easily, which I've done many times. And also, it comes with accessories like a light. And you can position your mic however you want. Uh, no more pillow forts, please. Yes, please. <laughs> Vocalboothtogo.com for VO recording and accessories. Speechless.